Now, if that is not a velociraptor, I don't know what is. Hello, PK friends. Welcome to May Dev Diary 2023. And we're going to have a look at what the team have been up to. In this Dev Diary, we'll be showcasing a selection of development highlights from May and talking a bit more about our goals for the animal overhaul. There's quite a bit to get through, so let's get to it. And also, what a beautiful Acrocanthosaurus. Where we're at. Both update 8 and update 9 have been progressing well and on all fronts over the past month. Many players have been eagerly waiting for a better look at the animal's overhaul. And while we do have more news to share, quite a lot of it relates to the back-end programming side of things. The current iteration of our animals, the ones in the public game, were built with a rigid architecture that made it difficult to add new behaviours. In the new system, we are building the AI modularly, creating sets of emergent behaviours that can be turned on or off depending on the species. Our goal here is to put a high focus on animal reactivity and social interaction through multiple layers of decision making. This means that animals become far more reactive to their environment and the creatures that they are housed with. For example, a T-Rex may cause a Dryosaurus to flee while your Triceratops hold its ground. As it currently stands, we are expecting development of this stage of the animal overhaul to wrap up towards the end of June. There have been a lot of changes under the hood with dozens of new variables at play, many of which will need to be tuned and adjusted to ensure everything responds to the way it is intended. Because of this, the team would like to release update 8 in July to provide an extra period of polish and development. We thank you for your patience and we look forward to sharing more previews as we get closer to release. Genetic mutations. Since the last blog post, we've been setting up the genetic mutation data for more and more of our species. Today, we'd like to show off how much variety can be achieved within a single skin from the same animal. With some basic masks and clever shaders, this has all been achieved procedurally. Now this is a bit of an I spy game because I can see the different colours within the neck here and obviously you can see little patches and stuff coming in. But from this one to this one, I guess maybe this one looks a little bit uh, pinkier. I don't know if that's the word for it. But yeah, you can see it's like pink tones within the skin. This I guess is more creamy. But between the two of them, I guess that's the only thing I can kind of notice on the albino. These ones down here are absolutely beautiful. I got to say, I'm loving the skin different textures. Again, if you put this one and this one together, slightly darker uh, within the, the black there. This one's kind of a little bit more tanned. But yeah, really cool. And then this is just like, uh, can you tell the difference between these two? I mean, slightly lighter within the body shape there, but maybe the face is also a little bit lighter. And this is just like, kind of solid black isn't it but yeah really interesting to see the different mutations there's so much variety that it's basically impossible to get the exact same variation during a regular playthrough to showcase this in real time you can see us cycling through melanistic albino and lewistic values at random on our smilodon i think i've just butchered that but anyway we hope this will help players get even more attached to a specific animal. Land value. In the previous dev diary, we touched on the land value system coming in update eight. Since then, we've introduced a dynamic inclusion mechanic to help players combat the negative effects of the power generators. This is part of a new tab in the management view, allowing you to visualize trouble spots in the park. Okay, so we are putting down a power grid here and you can see it's got this like f hazy fog and then we're popping down some trees and you can see that's kind of reduced it a bit and then we've got an uh, animal shelter and it's reducing it even further so yeah that's pretty cool so in the example you can see how blocking sight lines with foliage reduces the negative area of a power generator players can also use modular structures like walls and roof pieces to help further reduce their impact we hope to do a dedicated preview on land value and park beauty before this update releases. The next animal. To catch a glimpse of our next upcoming animal, you might want to follow the sounds of a particular chirps, cause and rattly barks. Be warned though, that sickle claw seems like it can pack more than a punch. 
Keep an eye out in June for a full unveiling of this species. We can't wait for you to see all of its wonderful animations and personality. Now, if that is not a velociraptor, I don't know what is. So that looks absolutely badass and I cannot wait to see it. What's in the pipeline? Let's talk about update 9, the one that's coming after the animal overhaul. Last month we briefly touched on the new species coming in this release and today we'd like to explore the primary theme of this update, the grassland biome. Yes, the grassland biome is finally coming to prehistoric kingdom and we're absolutely in love with it. 21 brand new plants and including providing classic staples such as beloved, oh my god I'm not even going to pronounce the, pr nope, 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 nope. All I will say is that we are getting pampas and elephant grass because a tree is a tree my friend, a shrub is a shrub and I am just not even going to attempt to pronounce it so thanks PK for that. So they have confirmed that the finished grassland map will be in Tanzania which is pretty awesome. But that, my friend, is the dev diary from Prehistoric Kingdom. So not too much about it, but this is the absolute winner winner Velociraptor dinner. So I'm really excited to see when that comes at the end of July. 